Hospital, uh, August 16th. Um, appreciate, or uh, I apologize, I should say, for the delay, technical delay here. Um, I'm Mayor Rich Nagel, and I'll be presiding. At this time, I'd like to call a meeting to order, and would you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, and again, welcome to our guests. Uh, roll call. Councilmember Bus. Here. Councilmember Sharpie. Here. Councilmember Batcher. Here. Councilmember Thomas. Here. Councilmember Morgan. Here. All council members are present. Uh, also at the table up here on my left is City Administrator Newsom. On my right, City Attorney Arneson. And um, with that out of the way, I would uh, ask P uh, Police Officer Jason Leonards to come forward, please. Jason, one more. Oh, look okay. at me. Sorry. There you go. No. All right. Please raise your hand, please. I, Jason Leonard. I, Jason Leonard. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States of America. That I'll support the Constitution of the United States of America. The Constitution of the State of Minnesota. The Constitution of the State of Minnesota. And the Charter of the City of Arlington. And the Charter of the City of Arlington. And to discharge faithfully the duties devolving upon me, and to discharge faithfully the duties devolving upon me, as a police officer for the city of Arlington, as a police officer of the city of Arlington, to the best of my judgment and ability, to the best of my judgment and ability. He gets one, right? You he gets get one, one and I get one. Okay. Some pictures with your family? Have them come up. Yeah, have them come up by the place. Come on, kiddos. Let's take a couple. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Hovering over me. <coughs> Thank you guys. Congratulations. All right, item number four approve the agenda. Uh, any corrections or changes or, or additions to the agenda? I have one, and I would like to move items 12 and 13 to take place right after item 8. And number 15. And number 15. Same thing? Mm -hmm. Okay. 12, 13, and 15 then would come in right after the communication section on your first page. Okay. Is there anything else? Motion to approve the yeah. agenda. Okay. Motion by Councilmember Morgan, second by Councilmember Batcher to approve the agenda with that one change. 
All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed no. Motion carried. The consent agenda this evening. Consent agenda consists of the following items. Item A, approval of the bills. Item B, approval of the August 2nd, 2021 City Council Workshop Minutes. Item C, approval of the August 2nd, 2021 City Council Minutes. <coughs> Excuse me. Item D, set Arlington's 2021 Truth and Taxation Hearing for December 6, 2021 at 6.30 p.m. Item E, approve hiring of Brianna Bardwell as EMR for the Arlington Area Ambulance Service. Item F, approve the WAC and SAC waiver agreement for 200 Frenzel Drive. Item G, approve the WAC and SAC waiver agreement for 216 Frenzel Drive. And lastly, item H, approve one day to four day temporary on sale liquor license for Sibley County Agricultural Association, September 10th through September 12th, 2021. Is there a motion? Motion by Councilmember Bush, second by Councilmember Batcher to approve the consent agenda as read. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed no. Motion carried. Um, is there anyone here this evening that is not on the agenda that wishes to address the council? Okay. Don't see anyone, so we'll move on. No announcements, no communications, and it brings us to item number 12, which is in the middle of page two, resolution 57-2021, a resolution approving the deed redevelopment grant application. City Administrator Newsom. That was sent out today, the redevelopment grant. It is a matching grant, just so that you know. This one is just the approving, allowing the mayor and myself to sign and submit this grant. And then the next one will be a resolution Open for discussion. This is the first matching grant of all the grants that we've been submitting. This is the first one that is a matching grant where the city is needing to make a match, a 50% match on the event. Okay, any questions? Do you know how many um, employees are you planning on bringing? bringing to the um, facility down there once it's all, all, all finished. Well, thank you, Council, for working this so Gina, hard. your microphone on? It's great. It's yes, it's great. So thank you so much for continuing to work this process and this issue. Um, so the, the, the deed portion is a demolition portion. And then you guys saw what the demolitions were today. And, you know, most of that money is in that boiler room. There's a little bit in the three canning room, and there's a little bit in the metal buildings, um, but the bulk of it is in that boiler room. Um, and, you know, we've got 50 employees up in Chaska. We've lost a few because of the announcement that we were moving. As I told my team up there, it's not done until the 31st. Um, so, but, you know, consequences are we announced it and don't get that until June. Uh, but we did really well at the fair and the county fair and we've run some advertising and we think that the, there's going to be support for people wanting to work in the factory so we hope that we have need for 50 right now we probably have a need for 60 I mean, frankly there, my my team gave me a list of 17 people they're looking for so i don't know that it's that high because they tend to overshoot the mark but I would think it's north of 60, and that's without Deliver Safe. So the minute Deliver Safe goes, once we start production of the fill freight, and then we've got the second product called, right now the name, and we're open to names, by the way, Orbital Safety Platform. That's our name we're settling on right now. The Orbital Safety Platform and fill freight, the numbers will be, I'm sure in once the paint shop opens, it'll be north of 100 within three years. I can't believe it. 
And I've run a shop as many as 130 before, so that number doesn't bother me. Uh, so, yeah, I'm very optimistic. Very optimistic. Anthony, you find the beat? <laughs> okay, any other questions for Gene? Thank you again. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Gene. Would someone wish to introduce the resolution? I'll introduce resolution 56 2021, allowing. Oh, that's not 57. It. 57 2021, approving the deed redevelopment grant application. I'll second. Who is it? Tom. Tom. Thomas. Resolution 57 2021, introduced by Councilmember Batcher, second by Councilmember Thomas, and that is a resolution approving the deed redevelopment grant application. Further discussion? Hearing none, we will call by roll call Councilmember Batcher. Yes. Councilmember Thomas. Yes. Councilmember Bliss. Yes. Councilmember Sharpie. Yes. Councilmember Morgan. Yes. Five votes in favor, none opposed. The resolution is adopted. Moving on to item 13, resolution 58-2021, a resolution uh, committing local match and authorizing contract signature for deed redevelopment grant. Amy? This one is the 50-50 match. This is a resolution stating that we will match the total amount in the grant application is 181000 so our half is 90000 are those numbers solid or maybe coming down a little bit or are these well, that's where we're at now? Well, they did come down, right? That's what I was whispering to Jean. Do you want to come up and we were touring the facility okay. if I need to adjust the numbers? So, where do we end? Um, when, we, when Amy and I first approached and said, let's try to figure out how to make this work, we got shocking numbers from the contract. I thought it was bad. Um, and then Amy encouraged me, she said, oh, you can general this yourself. So here I am, generaling it myself. <laughs> and, uh, and I have done really well um, on some of the ideas that I've come up with, and there are some things we can do, and I'm getting good advice from good people. Um, so we, the numbers are, but they're constantly moving. I mean, I'm getting new information, like today. We got new information on the road. We brought a different person in who, who has a different type of business. Yes, they do roofing, but they, they were like, and he's also got a, a family relationship. One of my executives at my business, it was his son-in-law. So there was some trust factor there. And he went up on the roof, first time we had actually gone up on the roof myself. And, um, and we've got new ideas. And they're going to be new numbers. And they're going to be less than the numbers we have now. But we don't know what those numbers are. Now that doesn't apply to the deed stuff. It's really more the construction side. So that's why it's there's a bouncing ball here. There's actually three or four bouncing balls. And so it's hard to keep up with it because there's the, the deed grant is about demolition, the jobs grant is about job creation, and the milk grant is about construction. The construction. Mm -hmm. Which is so and the construction numbers are constantly moving. I think they will until we go. Here's a purchase order, and then we'll, and then even then they'll probably be changing orders. Yeah. You know, so. So, can I just make a suggestion? Can we just say that the city will owe no more than nine, yes. ninety thousand five hundred towards this? It'll be under it. Okay. I'm pretty confident. Not to exceed. Not to exceed. Yep. Okay. Very clear. Yep. I'll introduce resolution fifty-eight twenty twenty-one, a resolution committing local match, not to exceed. 90,500. 90, 90,500. And authorizing contract signature for the redevelopment grant. Second. Resolution 58 2021, introduced by Councilmember Batcher, second by Councilmember Morgan. And it is a resolution committing local match not to exceed $90,500 and authorizing contract signature for deed redevelopment grant. Further discussion? Where does the money come out of? This money is probably going to go to the 
probably one of our general funds. Other questions? Comments? I think we could have more discussion on that. Where it's going to come from? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't need to decide that at this point. No. Any other questions, comments? Hear none, vote by roll call. Councilmember Thomas? Yes. Councilmember Morgan? Yes. Councilmember Sharpie? Yes. Councilmember Bliss? Yes. Councilmember Batcher? Yes. Five votes in favor, none opposed. The resolution is adopted. Okay, and you said item 15. Uh, discussion on Seneca Building Electrical Meter. Jean, can I have you come forward on that too, mm -hmm. on the electrical meter, mm -hmm. and discuss why it has to be, oh, you want to discuss what the issue was and why we have to have it moved? Uh, so, uh, the, the facility technically doesn't have its own power source right now. <clears throat> Bottom line is, it, it has power, but it doesn't have its own source of power. The source comes from Northland um, Drive. You know, and frankly, I, I think at the time when Northland Drying was sold, the problem should have been remedied. And it could have been remedied in this room. Because the lights and the, all the power for that facility is being paid for by Northland Power. And, and they know that. They know that that's the situation. They just, <coughs> they haven't said it's right about it. Um, and to my knowledge. Um, so, so we, you know, the, the, the building to the east has its own main. So it's really just two thirds of the property that has the problem, and we just have to switch it. I'm very happy about the numbers that came in. Greatly relieved, actually, just because I was concerned that the numbers might move the other direction, and we have a really big problem. Um, but it, it, I think long term it makes most sense to do this because we you know everything gets redirected it gets set up properly and now you have two separate PIDs in the city that can kind of maybe go their own way even maybe they can create I plan on occupying it but who knows if, you know you now have a 50 potentially a 56 57 thousand square foot building to the east one block off of Main Street that could be a really nice little building and then you've got the big apartment facility with the fabrication and the, and the outer floor basement. So, but, but I, you know, I was surprised. I didn't know that there was a power problem. I learned of it probably two weeks into the purchase agreement. And then it was pointed out by my attorney a few days ago that that was actually kind of a breach of the contract. And that because the building can't be occupied the way it is, it has to be fixed. It can't go, it can't go forward without fixing the problem. So it needs to be fixed. You know, and I urge Dave and the city to come up with a solution. I feel like I'm standing on the outside looking in on this one because um, I didn't really know the problem was there. Jean, which one makes more sense? They give you two options: option one for eighteen thousand, option two for sixteen thousand. I, I don't, I don't so, know that it matters. Uh, um, Marvin said that we spoke about it, and it seems that it does not matter. We could go the cheaper of the two routes if I, that's okay with you. Yeah. The, the only thing is make sure that the cheaper of the two, there is some amperage capacity issues coming from the alley. Is the, I, can't, I, don't, I never saw the email, so is, is the boring one the more expensive or the one, I guess they're both boring. They're yeah, under the ground, right? Okay, okay so. Well, yeah, but they were concerned that, that this feeder didn't have the capacity to, to go. Well, the way it looks, it looks like it's the same feeder coming down purple. Right. Otherwise, they'd have two feeders coming in there, but it looks like it's all one feeder. Yeah. Is, is there a gauge change at AF10? What do you mean? Uh, does, does the wire switch? change diameter? Yeah, it will from the underground up to the overhead. But the underground... 
the overhead carries enough ass right. to carry. Right. Yeah. Okay, that was the concern. I had heard that that was a problem. I didn't look yeah. at the numbers. As an engineer, I didn't look at it. There's um, no problem if they have to put new overhead, a heavier wire from year to year. Okay. That's that shouldn't cost that much to put the system in year. Right. You know. So if it can carry the 1500, that'll see us for the year. Well, they were just talking 2000 while we were there. Right? Well, yeah, the 1500 amp transformer will be enough to, to get us going. And then hopefully in two or three years, I'm here asking to build, get a building permit and add on to the south. Because that's one of the options, I think. So the, the I'm assuming we own the transformer, yeah. correct? So is this one that we already have, one of them that we were talking about in the mm -hmm. back? Or? That's what mm -hmm. we were saying. Both of them are. So, no, it, I don't think any of it matters at all. And hallelujah. And from an economic development point of view, it makes sense to split those properties up. That's a monster of property. Yeah. It's hard. Yeah, logistically. Few and far between that come that want that much property. Right. Arlington, I think we want to see this happen. We want to see these two guys close. We want to support both of them. Dave's been really good and built a lot in our community. Gene's now bringing in all these jobs. Would the city be willing to go half with Dave Stywick to to pay for this electrical? Half is only a little over eight thousand dollars for each of us to get this closed. Dave, would you be willing to do that? Yes. Yes, and I would just add that I would. Yeah, I would, I, agree. I, I would tend to agree. Thank you. I would leave it up to them for but we'll go thinking with. of the future. Okay. Council members, what are your thoughts on this? Maybe we could pass it that uh, um, our portion would be 9,000, what, uh, 85? Yeah. Of, of the larger one, in other words, not to exceed, mm -hmm. not to exceed 9,085. That way, it even the more costly one is taken care of. So if we had somebody building a new plant in town, we'd have to provide the transformer and the power. So I mean, if we look at it that way, essentially we need to provide the power there. So the fact that we get half of the price, I think, is a bonus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There, there is a concrete pad before. Which on here that they don't want to find a problem. It says by others. Ross, should we pass this in the form of a resolution? Can we come to a resolution on the fly tonight so that we can have this in writing that the city will pay for half and Dave will pay for half? What are your, what's your recommendation? Yeah, I guess the resolution is uh, appropriate approach to it, yeah. Just so that it, the resolution is done so that it doesn't hold up anything with their closing on August 31st? Anything else that should be added to the resolution? Well, who's going to make the decision as to which program? Dave said MVEC, allow it up to MVEC. Whatever so they would recommend. Okay. We just do not say? to exceed eight, Not to exceed 9,085. Nine this that would be part of the resolution. Yeah. And then we can do a uh, roll call vote, just mm -hmm. like we would a resolution. So this would be resolution 59-2021. How is It would be better if they went to the pad, the more expensive one, because if any trees fall down, which that house we're looking at to buy, the You're going to cut the tree down, though, right? Uh, the city of Amy promised her to do that. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. Let Kirby do it. Hey. So, <laughs> <laughs> you don't know the way to farm here. Uh, if, if you go this <laughs> way, you're going to connect onto the overhead line. Right. Here, you're going to go into the cabinet. Oh, right this right. way, if the trees go down, they can disconnect you here. Right. Right? Yep. 
that's just my opinion to go to the, to the underground box or the underground tank. Could you introduce her as well? Yeah, I was starting to. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's, I saw him it's, waving back it's there. It's, it's, it's 59-2021, right? 59-2021. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And it's not to exceed. $9,085. Second. All right, then the resolution uh, was is 59 2021, and it would be uh, it was introduced by Councilmember Thomas, second by Councilmember Morgan, and that is uh, to uh, for the city and Cywick, uh, Dave Cywick, uh, to split the cost of the inst how would I how would this be worded? The moving of the transformer, moving of the transformer, yeah, the transformer basically, it's power a new power supply. For yep. Like okay. Okay, new power supply source or whatever. All right. Any questions on it? Hearing none, we'll vote by a roll call. Councilmember Batcher? Yes. Councilmember Sharpie? Yes. Councilmember Bus? Yes. Councilmember Morgan? Yes. Councilmember Thomas? Yes. Five in favor, none opposed. Resolution 59 2021 is adopted. Thank you. You guys are done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very yep. excited not just on calling the building for Gene to come because uh, I've been to a lot of council meetings right here in this room yeah. as well as all around. Most of the business that are coming are starting with zero employees and very few, you know, wow. already got something in place. So it's pretty, pretty exciting and, and pretty rare to see. We are excited as well. Mm -hmm. okay. well thank very you. Thanks, thanks for everyone. Thank, thank you very much. Thanks, Gene. See ya. All right, getting back on track here. Uh, to reports, a July Police Department report. Andrew. Chief Connection. Let's get to it with some important <laughs> stuff. <huh? laughs> <laughs> There you go. So, um, so yeah, that's it for the uh, compared to that. The last one uh, was 266 uh, a year ago. This time they were 246. So, you know, we've been here for a little over a year now. We're starting to maybe see some numbers there as well. Do we issue batons? Uh, I read through there. It was pretty uh, specific baton. on uh, on the baton. Some some of our guys have batons, but yeah, you're not supposed to you can sh you can display them at any point in policy. But yeah, it was really uh, you'd have to probably almost have to whip it out to make sure you were following it correctly. <laughs> right, hold on a second, let me read this. <laughs> yeah, I I think it's a good policy. Uh,
do we have a, it says it's an update to the APD public assembly and first amendment. Do we have one now that is just being in effect updated? We did not have one at all. Okay. And um, they sent up model, model policies. Mm -hmm. And I think the one, I think the initial one I sent to Amy, uh, I didn't go in and fill in the blanks of agencies and stuff. And as I read through there, I noticed uh, Uniform that did talk about Ryan Deer, that he was having it. I just put that, that language out. But then just made sure that you know, policy came in after the calls. He was still in uniform and had no sign in. Would you like a motion on that to get that? Sure. All right. Yeah, give me a motion. Yeah. <laughs> I'll make a motion to approve that. Backfield motion. <laughs> second. That was Thomas second? Yep. yep. Okay. Motion by Council Member Morgan, second by Council Member Thomas to approve the Arlington Police Department Public Assembly and First Amendment Activity Policy Number 33. Further questions or discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. The motion carried. So it's standby Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> I got plans or something? <laughs> well, I've got to test the policy right away. <laughs> 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 Chief. See ya. All right, uh, planning and zoning, community center update, uh, Phil Mangus. How is everyone? Good. Okay, so let's get community center out of the way. So far, nothing serious has been going on. We've been having events and everything for there. Uh, this week, pretty much every weekend this month has been pretty busy. We've had about two weddings, one coming up. Uh, we had one, not this weekend, but the following weekend, which went pretty well. Nothing serious except the ice machine ran out of ice, but nothing that big of a deal. It wasn't turned on. Oh. So that, that, that was, it was oh, nothing good. like it was broke or anything like that. It was just miscommunication there, an error, human error. Um, other than that, September is pretty booked. We've only had one real serious event on the weekends. Other than that, we have two land auctions. Um, some, I think, a reunion, and I forget the other event. Um, but beyond that, nothing really that serious to report. Uh, yeah, when it comes yep. to that. So there's that. Planning and zoning. Um, this Wednesday, the committee will going to have a workshop to discuss uh, cleaning up the code. I'm currently in the process of working on an outline, which I'm going to send to. Um, the committee members either tonight, probably tomorrow morning because there's a lot in there. Um, we're going to discuss pretty much a three-step variance process, which I'm not sure if I have brought up before, but pretty much what that is going to be is the first step is going to be the administrator exception process, second is going to be an administrative review, meaning uh, people will file for administrative permit and they will take it in front of the committee, we'll review it, and if it meets certain standards and um, all that stuff, we can approve it without any conditional use permit. However, if it would, it would then need to go for a public hearing, i.e. conditional use. We also, we, there's just a lot to clean up, um, particularly um, with the situation that happened with Peeps repairs. There's some things that need to be address, addressed. Um, as well as we need to clarify the difference between interim use permits and conditional permits because the way interim use permits are used in our code is not accurate based on Minnesota statutes. Uh, and other than that, there's also some other minor things just particularly when it comes to temporary structures just to go a little bit more similar to the way building code addresses them, you know, try to be consistent with that stuff because it's always good to have consistencies with building code and zoning, try to line that stuff up. And, but beyond that, any of you guys want to come Wednesday, you're more welcome to come to the workshop. Um, like I said, we'll just be talking about cleaning up the code and doing things like that. Beyond that, there's really not much else zoning-wise going on. 
permits have been pretty slow for right now. I mean, basic just re-roofings and things mm -hmm. like that, so nothing really that serious. Land use, patios and things like that, so mm -hmm. nothing serious. Okay, any questions for Phil? What was the snafu with each repair? It was just some, um, it was just the way the conditional use permit um, was laid out. That's pretty much what it was. It didn't really, in my, in my opinion, it didn't really, um, based on how it was laid out, it didn't take into consideration the business expanding and what type of business it is. It also brought up the question of, it also was some other things with my predecessor too. It ended up more or less being a neighborhood dispute where my one predecessor kind of didn't really just dragged along Brad Kruger and didn't really give him any answers and go through the process that was needed okay. now. Um, also, it did bring up too that in an I one district, there someone's allowed to buy and sell like boats and stuff like that, but not do auto repairs and things like that. So it's just sure. certain things, minor things like that. Nothing really that serious. Okay. Anything else for Phil? All right. Thank you. Uh, July revenue report. We're sitting at 58% of revenue collected. It's about where we should be, about too. About where huh? we should be. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the expenditures. Everything's sitting. I'll just move on to the expenditure report up there as well. We're sitting at 53%. So we're sitting where we should be. Budget is sitting and take a look at it. And if you have questions, ask me. Okay. Anything on that? All right, we will move into uh, item 10 first reading of ordinance 336 Center Point Energy Gas Franchise Ordinance. I was going to offer, but <laughs> I think I'd have a five to nothing vote with not to do it. Say, Actually, know. according to the charter, I was looking at the charter one day, mm -hmm. and it did say every one of these, I'm supposed to read it. Word for I know word. you are supposed to read I the know. whole thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we get to yeah. Do. You get to just, <laughs> just say well, it's being sent to you, so. The end. The end, yeah. Just look it over. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. There's nothing in there that. Uh, well, actually, I, I guess uh, procedurally, it's good CenterPoint contacted us because I guess we fell asleep on this. Uh, our previous 20-year franchise agreement with them uh, actually expired already um, uh, earlier this summer. Um, this uh, proposed uh, franchise ordinance is very similar to the one that expired and also very similar to the model uh, gas franchise ordinance uh, recommended by the League of Cities. Um, it's almost word for word the model ordinance. Uh, I didn't see any issues with it. Uh, it is a 20-year agreement. Uh, there is a provision where the city can amend it on 90 days notice, uh, but uh, it requires the franchisee, the gas company, to agree to the amendment. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, it, it, it's not, it depends on how you look at it, uh, 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 but I would approach it as if it were a locked in 20 year agreement. Uh, uh, they do have to abide by all of our regulations regarding uh, uh, any project that would affect our rights of way. They would have to uh, get a permit first. Uh, they would have to return the street or the ground to its original condition prior to the project, to the satisfaction of the city, and so on. Um, there is a possibility that we can charge a franchise fee. Uh, I checked with the league on that, um, and it's clear that all that would happen is if we charge a franchise fee, 
the utility has the right to turn around and add it to our uh, taxpayers' gas bills. So it's really a roundabout, sneaky way of increasing the taxes that we charge our, our, our uh, citizens, um, which is why I think we have not charged a franchise fee to the gas utility in the past. And my understanding is uh, many small towns do not. The larger cities, such as Minneapolis and St. Paul, routinely do charge a franchise, franchise fee. Um, I think they're more isolated from their voters and taxpayers. <laughs> so it's a way that the uh, big city governments get money from the gas utility that the council then can decide how to spend. Uh, that's really what it amounts to. Mm -hmm. But uh, my suggestion uh, in my email to the uh, mayor and city administrator was if the council wanted to explore that idea of charging a franchise fee, uh, you could authorize the city administrator to perhaps do a little study, um, other local towns, see what they do. Um, I asked the league and they do not have that data. Uh, it's just something they don't collect. Otherwise, I guess my recommendation is to approve it as submitted. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the... Uh, no, this is just for first reading. Lifted two and seven <laughs> reading. Yeah, right. nothing yet. Right. Just ready to go. No, let's get the second We're ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, look at what we went through with the cable commission with this mm -hmm. franchise fee yeah. thing. It just seems like yeah. it's just not something okay. that... I see a typo in our... Okay. Wow. Oh, yeah, I see it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right there. All right. If there are no more questions, any other comments, this will go as the first reading to the end. Okay. Next and time we'll have a resolution. Or next time next we'll time. approve yeah. the resolution. And I won't read that either word for word. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, just a warning. <laughs> I'm not going to start that now. Are we ready to call it an evening? Yeah. All right. Uh, resolution 56-2021, a resolution allowing the exemption of city code chapter 30 under sections 30.93J and 30.104J. We did a verbal uh, approval of Dave Meffert to allow him to put in his own uh, well and septic system last time, but I went back and looked at the city code and the city code states that we have to pass a resolution. So I put together a resolution for city council to approve this time. Yeah. So Same thing that we talked about. Do we have to approve it? Yeah. I mean, do we, do we have to? <laughs> <laughs> that would not be very nice. <laughs> no, I, just, I didn't mean that. <laughs> I just thought you were going to say, no, you don't need to do it. Yes, we need, we to, need do to do this. According right? to the city. This is so it's 56 2021? 20, yeah. I'll, I'll submit to resolution 56 2021 20, for approval. Is there a second? Second. Okay, resolution 56 2021, a resolution allowing the exemption of city code chapter 30 under section 30-93J and 30-1 or 30.104J, uh, and that is uh, in regard to the David Meffert um, water and sewer issue. And that was introduced by Councilmember Thomas, second by Councilmember Buss. Any further questions? Hearing none, vote by roll call. Councilmember Sharpie? Yes. Councilmember Morgan? Yes. Councilmember Thomas? Yes. Councilmember Batcher? Yes. Councilmember Buss? Yes. Five votes in favor, none opposed. The resolution is adopted. Moving down to item 16, approve or deny the GNE bid in the amount of $28,484.20. Lee Ortloff, good evening. Good evening. This goes back to the um, energy audit that we had by Minnesota Rural Water. You guys were presented with the results of that. So has Green Isle, so has the API committee. And it was their recommendation to move forward with that purchase at that time. Um, just had a hard time getting another quote because it's kind of specializing. It took a while. You know, so it took a while. So we got a quote from GNE. That's for a Kaiser tri bolt blower. Right now we have just a two bolt blower. We'd be able to run it at a lot lower speed. Plus insulation comes with 
So there's D&E &E and MMS because one is the equipment, one's the oh, installation. I see. Does that I make see. sense? Yeah. Can you give us that total again? Forty-five what? Forty-five thousand one hundred four dollars and twenty cents. Okay. Questions for Lee. Second. Motion by, motion by Council Member Batcher, second by Council Member Morgan to approve the uh, bid from GNE at uh, 28484 and 20 cents, and then also to approve the MMS bid for installation of uh, $16,620 for a total of $45,10420. There further discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed no. Motion carried. Item 17, approved DNI bid in the amount of $4,630.37 from Tri-State Pump and Control. So we have two bids. Um, between the cities of Greenland, on Island, which you may be able to look on the south side of the road and the top of every hill, if you look at the pipe that sits down the ground and looks into the venue, that's a manhole. Inside that manhole, there's a peer review cell that's from Force Main pushing all the way over from the main lift station in Greenland to right by the fence where they come to the town with like five foot in between that comes into there. Um, there's nine of them from here today. We did a complete thorough inspection, which has really never been done. It's something that's kind of been overlooked. But we discovered one was completely missing. It's got a the pH valve comes up, everything's stainless. Somebody put a cap on it. We should have that in here because if you get air between the line, it's like uh, air and diesel, it ain't going to move, it ain't going to fizz, it's just going to be a shock absorber on the sewer for pumping mm -hmm. uh, pump fluid. And so each time that, that, that stops and starts, it releases air if there's anything in your spring loading that starts. And there's one of them that's failing, um, it's leaking. So I'd like to have both of them, while well, we need the one for sure, and, and that they'll do a live cap of it. There's, nobody wants to touch that in case where that cap is on there, if you start twisting on that, that twist and break, you got a serious problem. So they're better off just do a live cap next to it and install a new one and just leave it. So I got um, the bid by quality flow is a direct replacement of, of what is in there. And then uh, I have Tri-State Pump, they are cheaper. That's their brand, but they're all stainless steel, they all do the same job. So it doesn't matter to me. Um, I'd like to replace, well we need the one and I'd like to replace the other one. They are rebuildable. So I would like to keep that to rebuild it because we got seven more like it and I'm telling you they're gonna suck. And with that I can buy the parts, rebuild it, and then you guys will never see it. We'll just take it out and keep it so we can use it better. So is this so. solely the stuff that's coming from Green Isle that's affected by this? Yep. yep. So is this something that should be separated? Yeah. No, it's a three. Yeah. 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 That's a separate fund. They pay into us. Yeah. And there's there's a balance, healthy balance in oh, there. Healthy, healthy, very healthy, healthy balance. balance in there. Yeah, I get that. I'm just yeah. thinking that it's no, they pay in to we share that together. So they pay in. Second? I'll second. Motion by Council Member Batcher, second by Council Member Thomas to approve the bid in the amount of $4,630.37 from Tri State Pump and Control for air release valves on Force Main between Green Isle and Arlington. That comes out of Fund 603. 
Additional discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carried. Thank you. Thanks, Lee. Committee updates. Anything that you haven't been supplied with as far as minutes? Reports of anyone or any meetings that you've attended? Okay, moving on to open discussion. Is there anything that would, anyone would want to bring up for open discussion? I have something that sparked uh, a little bit of, <clears throat> with the liquor license that we're, or temporary liquor licenses that we hand out, liquor license that we do for the Arlington Raceway, mm -hmm. um, the liquor license that we do for the Ball Asso Ballpark Association, uh, they're still on a 3-2 license, and that stuff is hard to come by. Um, there's like two kinds that you can pick. Uh, so <clears throat> I guess I guess my thought is just to bring it up and maybe we can have some discussion or something about if there's a way that we want to or could structure um, kind of like how we structure the racetrack, so many events because, I mean, it's limited. It's not year-round mm -hmm. liquor license um, to try and see what we can come up with and be proactive before it comes to a point where we're stuck saying, oh my gosh, what are we going to do about this because we can't. I think Attorney Harrison has some information to share. Uh, we spoke about this when I first started as city administrator. Yes, and also I've researched it uh, for the city of Green Isle uh, in their baseball park. Um, and uh, the legislature is supposed to be addressing this but for a couple of years now, they have found other things to do or not do. Um, and it is getting to be more and more of a problem. You, as you correctly state, you know, 3 2 is kind of fading out. Um, and uh, what's that? I think we're almost one of the last states. Yeah, we're well, I was just going to say Minnesota is the last state. Yeah. And so uh, we're behind the times uh, on that. Uh, there are some workarounds, but they they don't work real well. Uh, these um, uh, you know, one day liquor licenses, uh, but they are limited as far as how many days each year, and they typically have to be sponsored by um, a nonprofit like the Lions Club, for example. Uh, so it's it's not a real good solution. We can't grant them a full on liquor license. No. Yeah, well, what did we do for civil? What did we do for the racetrack, though? There, there's there, a it partial. To, it's a law that has to do with baseball parks. Yes, uh, hmm. there. Well, and raceways. Uh, something the legislature did, uh, which again doesn't make a lot of logical sense, but it all has to do with who lobbied them successfully, mm -hmm. you know, at certain times in the past, and there are certain exemptions, and raceways are one of them, uh, from that rule. But uh, baseball parks are not included, um, except that <laughs> there are certain uh, stadiums, for example, that uh, in the you Twin know, Cities, in the Twin <laughs> Cities <laughs> that has a special exemption from the legislature. So, uh, and that that question was raised in Green Isle as well. Uh, uh, you know, well, so and so can do it, so and so can do it. Why can't we? Well, it's because the legislature hasn't carved out an exception for small town baseball parks. So is there anything that we can do on a local level to some kind of? Not really, except again, this, this workaround where we can maybe grant them, you know, up to the allowed 10 one day, uh, you know, liquor permits if sponsored by Lions Club or some other or chamber. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if we have a little dog race around the baseball fields once a year, Race yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Bring your greyhound. There you go. Well, I mean, that's an idea. I'm just trying to think, you know, there's got to be a way for to get around it because I just don't think Turtles. it's going to be doable. Every been looking at a way to get around it. I've had conversations with Gaylord. I've talked to Lori Waltz over there about it, too. We're all struggling with the same thing. There's not mm -hmm. much we can do. When I talked to the Liquor Control Commission, they're quite frustrated about it, and their their response is always, call your legislators, mm -hmm. 
you know, tell them to get on the stick and get a solution to this. So, now I know uh, Representative Grunhagen has been contacted by the city of Green Isle uh, several times, and uh, you know, but one person, you know, can't get the job done at the legislature. Uh, right. He's indicated he's in favor of handling it. But, um, so, and actually. It's not. It's the golf clubs, right? So it's the amateur golf clubs that aren't making any money, mm -hmm. that, I mean, are funding all their equipment, all their balls, yeah. upkeep of their places, pretty much solely on their own, right? I mean, I, I haven't seen the, the Arlington A's come to us to ask us for much of anything, mm -hmm. right? I mean, and, and they're not making that money off of off of three two beers and the burgers that they're selling, but that that's the only way that they're they're making anything. Unless a state tournament comes to town, right? Then they're then they're going to be making some better money. You know, admission is cheap. Well, the the, the point uh, you brought up about the baseball association statewide lobbying, and I think they've been doing that. Uh, I know uh, Green Isle. I, I think I contacted them and. I had a recollection. What's that? Yeah, and I think they were doing what they could, but I don't know that they have a lot of leverage at the state, you know, because it's small town ball. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's another case of outstate Minnesota, not. So does it have to do with the location, or could one of our licensed uh, liquor retailers just set up a little spot and sell it there? Like say they had like a little trailer or something that they just wheeled up and. Well, there is a catering law that it's kind of uh, murky, but uh, it's where you have kind of like a portable liquor license uh, having to do with catering, but that includes uh, you have to serve food. Um, but they are serving. Yeah. No. What's that? They are serving food at the ballpark. Yeah. But I mean, the caterer has to. Yeah. But then you can give a liquor pickle. license they to the caterer. They could just have a jar of pickles up there. Yeah. When I talked to oh, the state, though, they said you can't have hard liquor in the state. No, no, no that was I mean, the next. I don't think it's hard liquor that would No, be. I mean, beer is considered hard liquor. Yeah. yeah. Because you can only have 3-2 right now. And that's the second thing, that if you do have that, because that was another thing we now was looking at. And, of course, they wanted to be able to sell in the stands. But my research indicated that if you had a liquor licensee somehow, you know, authorized to have a satellite facility at, at the ballpark, it had to be an enclosed, Correct. segregated facility. Oh, have to be all more all controls. It'd have to be a truck. Yeah, more yeah. controls. Right. And part of it, what those facilities down in the cities that are allowed uh, above three two, those are state owned. Mm. And they're encompassed in a enclosure that they consider. Yeah, a beer garden. You got it. Mm -hmm. The state makes the big connector connects the dots. The state makes all the money off the hard liquor sales that they get down there. And I don't think at the time when all of it came through, because when they redid all the Sunday liquor sales, the odd part about it is that was one that was brought up and it got amended and taped that one. So well pretty soon none of the breweries are gonna make three two. No. I mean, I, ha I, ha have I, have, I have to think that they're just labeling it, to be honest. They just add a little water, water it down a little bit. Hmm. 18 ounces is 3-2, <laughs> and above that. It's <laughs> they just change the packaging on the line, yeah. keep Silos it going. <laughs> <laughs> Who could so ever tell between 3-2 and 3-3? Three, three? Would, would, would our council be willing to maybe write up a letter? from the council and send it off to Greenhead Hagen or whatever the support sure the the or something. Does the council want the city administrator to draft such a letter? Any doctor prepared to draft a letter. <laughs> At the ballpark. Is that yeah. enough? <laughs> 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 We're not dry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would
would just I, I, outline the challenges with getting the, the 3 2 uh, product. And oh, right. I mean, ultimately, I think. I think it's going to be an issue because why, why do the brewery just want to do it for Minnesota? Right. They don't. And they don't. Bush just yeah. doesn't make a, no. or just for, you know, and, and no. mark, you know, mark them down in New Ulm, they don't make this a and specific beer for. The whole thing is, I mean, if you got. If you got bars and stuff open on Sunday, before that was the whole purpose was you could get three two at the grocery store. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Would you want to do that and bring it back to a future meeting? Be great. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I'd just like to thank the uh, EDA and the, I don't know if the planning and zoning was involved in the, the deal. I think you had a lot of work into it and you know, maybe the committee as well. but. Uh, it uh, seems really positive. I I was incredibly impressed with uh, the product line that uh, you know he's looking to launch, and um, I think it's a really good thing for the community. I was really impressed with this facility. It's very clean, very nice. Mm -hmm. right, right. Mm -hmm. It was very nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of people excited about it. There's a lot of people excited about it everywhere. I went yeah. to put gas in my car, and that's what I got asked about yep. when yep. I leave the building here. That's what yeah. I'm asked about that. Business, just to so. keep your fingers crossed at the end of two weeks that everything gets signed. Yeah, we just got to keep those guys from fighting. <laughs> keep them apart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is there anything else for discussion? There's something, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just for clarification, some of the council our sewer system connection with Green Isle. The history of that is uh, Green Isle's sewer treatment system was open pipes to what was then called Mud Lake, yeah. which could have been called something else. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the state was on them really heavy uh, to uh, treat their sewers. And they, right. yeah, and, and they were looking at creating their own sewage treatment plant. Uh, but the state disfavored that. Uh, they favor instead uh, having shared plant mm -hmm. uh, for a number of reasons. It's more cost effective in the long term. Uh, it's easier for the state to inspect, you know, one plant instead of two, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So um, Arlington and Greenow entered into a compact to have a shared sewage treatment system, and the state supplied a very significant amount of the money. Uh, to put it together, hmm. which included an upgrade of our existing plant, so it you know had additional capacity, and so the trunk line uh, uh, and the plant are are part of uh, a common system between the two cities, and we have a joint powers board that theoretically oversees that, uh, and Green Isle's users are supposed to pay the same sewage treatment rates as Arlington's users. Uh, of course, you know, they have a much lower number of users, but proportionately, you know, they pay their fair share. That's the theory. Mm -hmm. uh, one issue they've had, uh, as has Arlington, is the uh, infiltration. At one time, it was much worse, uh, you know, where Green Isle's water plant was putting out 10 gallons, and our sewage treatment plant was getting 20 gallons from Green Isle. You know, that, you know something was obviously wrong there. That's been somewhat corrected. Mm -hmm. Uh, various inflow sources have been discovered. A couple of big ones were the former farmhand plant, which is now that recycling yard. Uh, it, it turned out that when the plant burned down, nobody thought about the plumbing in that area. And so there are, I don't know, two or three open pipes where there used to be bathrooms or whatever. Floor drains. And, yeah. Floor drains, and the water was just whoosh, every year, you know, <laughs> whenever it rained. Whoosh. And then there was one. Uh, Somehow it was a, I think it was a farm field tile, or was it a ditch? Yeah, it was out. It was out oh, you know about it. Of, yeah, I remember them talking about it. Yeah, it yeah. So, so they, I think they've eliminated some of the major sources of infiltration, but they still have some, as does Arlington. As does Arlington. So that's the history of it all, um, and that's why the the trunk line from Green Isle to Arlington is our joint responsibility. Thank you. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Who had second? Thomas? Motion by 
Councilmember Wuss to uh, adjourn the meeting. Second by Councilmember Thomas. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, aye. no. Motion carried.